OK, this kind of question that we've got here is similar to one that came up in the 2019 exam, and it stumped a few people. If you've watched my earlier videos that I've done with year 12 about constant acceleration, you should notice something that's really familiar about this, because it's a simultaneous equation type question that we've got here. It says that there's a vertical mast, which is 32 metres high. Two balls, P and Q, are projected simultaneously at the same time, that means. Ball P is projected horizontally from the top of the mast with a speed of 18. Ball Q is projected from the bottom of the mast with speed 30 at an angle of alpha. And this is Q down here. Whoops. And it says the balls move freely under gravity in the same vertical plane and collide in mid-air. By considering the horizontal motion of each ball, well, they've been quite kind to tell us the horizontal first of all. But clearly, this one is going to move in this pathway. This one is going to move in this pathway. And when they get here, there's something very important about that point. What can you tell me about that point? If the distances are the same, tell me more. And the time is the same. It was obviously they have to be in the same place at the same time. Often we're in the same place as other people, but not at the exact same time. Okay? So when we get to this point here, there's a couple of things that are going to be true. We're going to say the displacements, there's something to do in the same place and the same time when we get here. Okay? So they've asked us to consider the horizontal motion of both of them. So I'll do horizontal for P to begin with. And I don't know what this distance is, so I'm just going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it x. So the distance is x. The speed is 18. And I'm going to say that the time is t. This time I've got two unknowns. But surprise, it's going to be to do with um, simultaneous equations, OK? But not for horizontal. Our a is 0, so we don't, we're, not, we're not bothered about that one. Then I'm going to look at the vertical motion. Not vertical motion for Q. Horizontal. horizontal. They've asked us to consider the horizontal. Now, if we look at the horizontal motion for Q, we know that it's also traveling x meters in the horizontal direction. And its speed horizontally is 30 cos alpha. So we get 30 cos alpha. We know that the same time that it's traveling is the same time that this one is traveling in to get to that point. So however we want to set this up, um, I don't think it really, really matters. But we could say that distance equals speed over time. And here, I told you I can never remember that. Distance equals speed times time. Distance equals speed times by time. Well, these two distances are equal to each other. It's simultaneous. So we get 18t equals 30 cos alpha multiplied by t. Cancel the t's and divide by 30 which is the same as 3 over 5. And that tells you that cos alpha is 3 over 5. Now, the next part of the question is probably the bit that was harder. But you can pretty much predict what's going to happen. We've just done simultaneous equations considering the horizontal motion. I'm just going to do simultaneous equations considering the vertical motion that we've got here. So we're now going to, for part b of the question, We've just worked out that cos alpha is 3 fifths. What do you think else I want to know if cos alpha is 3 fifths? What is it? 4 fifths. Good. So we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to look at the vertical motion of particle P, because that's what we did. Uh, I'm not going to do the vertical motion of particle P. That's Yeah, we can do that. Why not? Vertical motion of particle P. Which direction do you think we should consider as the positive? Yeah, I'm going to do downwards, OK? Because the thing that I'm interested is I'm interested in finding out how far has it moved downwards. And I'm going to call it S1, or I could have called it SP, the, the displacement that P has done. So we can see its displacement is going to be S1. Its acceleration, is this question said 9.8 or 10? It didn't say, so we'll just go with 9.8. Um, what else do I know? u is 0. Good. And the thing I'm interested in, again, is t. I'm just going to name that the amount of time it takes to get there is t. I'll then do the vertical motion for the other particle, q. Which direction do you think I should take as positive? I'm going to take upwards as positive. Now, there's something quite special about taking upwards positive here. Because when I measure its displacement, what can you tell me about the value of these two displacements that I've got here? What type of values are they? 
Um, each one, what is this a positive or a negative, this one? Yeah. Pardon? This one is positive because for this one we measure downwards as positive. And for this one here, we're saying upwards is positive. So both of these numbers that we have here are positive, which is a good thing, and you'll see why in a second that's going to be important. So I can say for this one that it's the Q particle, its displacement is S2, its acceleration is minus 9.8 because it's going in the opposite direction. Its initial speed is 30 sine alpha, which is 30 times 4 over 5, which is 24. Stop me if I do anything wrong. And we know that the value of t is t. So I'm going to set up a couple of s equals, u, s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So I get s1 equals 0 plus 4.9 t squared. I'm then going to get that s2 equals ut, which is 24t, plus a half a t squared. s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Good, I've done that correctly. Now, s1 is not equal to s2, because it doesn't say anywhere in the question that it meets in the middle. When you look at this diagram, what can you tell me about s1 and s2? Good, s1 and s2 add up to 32. Can you now think why it was important that s1 and s2, we wanted them to be positive? Because I want them to add. If I'd done one of them as a negative, it wouldn't be quite as simple as just saying that one plus that one equals 32. You'd have to be a bit more careful because you might be adding a negative number, so you would actually probably need to subtract them. So that's why I wanted to make sure that they were both positive. We know from this diagram those two distances is 32. So S1 plus S2 is 32, which means 4.9 t squared from S1 plus 24t minus 4.9t squared from S2 is equal to 32. Very generously, these cancel, and so we get t is 32 over 24, which simplifies to 4 over 3, or 1.3 seconds to two significant figures. Now, there are questions that are very similar to this one that are in the Year 12 mechanics videos that I've uploaded on constant acceleration, and it's exactly the same kind of thing as this, but instead of it being in two dimensions, like projectiles, it's just a one-dimensional thing where it's, someone is throwing it from the top of the cliff downwards, someone is throwing it from the bottom of the cliff upwards. The only thing that changed in our one is they actually were also moving across at the same time. So the year 12 content that you'll see on this is just this stuff down here. This is all stuff that is literally year 12. The only thing that's different for the year 13 is arguably easier. The year 13 stuff is just the GCSE thing. And if you can remember the speed equals distance times time, speed equals distance divided by time, then you'll be OK. right? Now, I just wanted to quickly bring up the um, other exam question that came up on this in 2019 in the summer paper, because it's the same concept but it's slightly different. And I'd like to be able to highlight those things that are similar and that are different. So if I remember this correctly, in the most recent paper, there was a ball over here and a ball over here. And one was being projected like this. And one was being projected, I don't know, like this. And they met at a particular point. That's a terrible drawing of that. But you can imagine that they're both being thrown like from two different angles, and they meet somewhere in the middle. I'm going to redraw it because I'm not happy. Um, maybe this one is going to come like this, and then this one is going to come like this, and they meet somewhere over here. Now, in the previous one that we just did, we said that the horizontal distances were the same, and the vertical distances added up to a particular value. Can we try and summarize what might be different, or, or how we could summarize this problem? in that kind of language. The vertical, the, the vertical displacement is the same when they get here. And the the good. The horizontal distances are going to add up to the overall horizontal distance. If we call that one x1 and we call that one x2, overall, they will add up to, who knows, 100 meters. And clearly, the vertical displacement is just <coughs> the same for both of them. So same question, but just everything's kind of flipped around instead, OK? Just to make you aware of that kind of stuff that will be coming up. Is that helpful to look at?